Let's focus on the left sidebar. In the left sidebar, I have three different tabs. I have parts, tree, and list. And the part is going to show me all the different parts that I have, which are contained in my multi. Tree will give me a tree view of a selected part and list will give me a list view of a selected part. So let's start with parts and go from there. So right now I have an empty part and I can load something into it. So for example, this program and I can add another empty part and load something else. And I can just double click, for example, this one and it will be replacing the, the one that I have. And I can again create another empty and double click and it will go there. So as you can see, I, I can select the part. Just clicking anywhere in the part will give me the selection. That's one way to do it. And if I go to the tree view, you'll see that I, I have a drop down here. So I can select the specific part that I want and I can create a new part also. So uh, let's go back to parts and there you go. This is my newly created part. If I want to delete any of these parts, just right click and delete part. I can also just select any of the parts and click the minus. And I can also click this wrench here and have some uh, other options like load a program into the selected part or create a new program in the selected part. And I can also empty the selected part. So there you go, back to saving a multi. So if I have, for example, this multi here, I'm going to load this program here and another program here. And I can just go to my menu, save multi as, give this a name, my multi one and save. So now I have the multi saved and I can go and clear this multi and I can recall it back with a load multi or recent multis, whatever. And let's do that. So um, as you can see, this is the one. And if I want to play, I can of course play it. But as you can see, we have only the first one playing, the other one is not playing, and this is because we need to set the MIDI inputs. So this brings me to talk about the controls and everything that goes on inside a part. So each of these parts will have a program that is running here, and here we have a selector, so I can just click this arrow right or left and flick through the presets or programs and I have some unsaved changes. I can click OK and move on. And next we have octave and semitone transposing and we also have our MIDI input, mute, solo and MIDI output. So if I have a multi channel output set up in, in my DAW or you know in your system, then you can send different parts to different channels. Let me show you how that works. So um, I'm going to just remove this one, empty part. Sorry, I'm going to delete this part and I'm going to just load one of my favorites and let's play. It doesn't play. Why doesn't it play? It's a good example. We need to set the input here. So this is channel one. And now it plays. But if I have several parts and I want each of them to go to a different output, then let's load another one. And now I, I have both of them playing, but they all go to the same output. So in Cubase, it's pretty easy to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set, instead of main out, this one it will go to out two and the other one will go to out three. And here in the instrument, I'm going to just activate 
my outputs and I can just do this and here now we can see the different outputs and I can go into each of these sort of tracks and further do stuff like for example I can put um, uh, a filter for example let's put a filter here and that filter will only work on the, the first part all right so let's uh, just remove that and go back to our default here in addition Every part will have its own volume and pen controls and we'll see more of that when we are handling things in the mixer. One of the ways to understand Falcon and to better understand how parts work and what's inside is to load up a program and analyze it. So let's do that. I'm going to just clear the multi and just drag this preset here, this program and now what we see is that we have that program loaded in our default multi this is because we didn't save everything as a multi and what we have right now is just a simple control we can see that we have mute and the solo buttons it doesn't mean a lot when you have only one part but if we had more parts then it means something and now if we go to the tree view we'll see more we actually see that uh, there is this part, part one, it, it is running a program called ARP Voyage. And at the top level, we see expander filter, we see a, a spark verb, we see three band shelf, which is an EQ, and we have a maximizer. So where are they? I mean, where can I find all that? So in order for us to, to, to see this, we need to go to the Edit tab. And let's have a look at the program level. This is the top level. So I'm going to close everything. Just everything is closed except for the program. And now we see those effects here. This is the effect row. And we see all these effects here. And if I want to change anything, I can just click on any of them and see their UI. And what else do we have? So we also have three different layers. And if I'll go here to the layer level, we'll see that we have multiple selection. And in essence, it means that we have multiple layers. So every time you see multiple selection, it means there's more than one item. And in this case, more than one layer. And in the layer level, at that level, we can see that we have some effects, some event processors, and we see multiple here. It means that we have more than one, and we have modulations like analog ADSR. So let's get and understand what is this layer thing. So as you can see, we have three layers. That's, what, that's why we see multiple selection here. And if I'll focus, click on layer one, everything will reflect layer one so right now you can see that layers is designated here as layer one if i'll click layer two we'll see layer two and layer three and as you can see each of these layers will have different effects and different event processors or might have different modulation functions now if we want to go even deeper, we can see what's inside each of these layers. And in layer one, we'll see just one key group. And we'll talk about key group in a separate video, just focusing on key groups. But for now, we have one key group in layer one, and I can focus myself here on this. And, and I'll see that inside key group one, I have an analog synthesizer and analog oscillator so where is it so let's go to key group here we see key group one and we can see the effects we see the modulations and if i'll open up the oscillators we'll see the analog 
oscillator right here. So this is layer one. And if I'll focus myself on layer two, everything will change from the layer down. So right now I'm seeing layer two and everything that is related or anything that is below layer two, which means the key group that belongs to layer two and the oscillators and the mapping. This is what we see. And if I go to layer three, this is what I'll see. I'll see the effects, I'll see the modulations if they are, and I'll see the key groups and I'll see the oscillators and so on. So this is how I'm focusing myself on different levels of this part. Now, if we had more parts, we could just click this uh, drop down and we can focus everything on that other part. Now, let's sum up what we've learned so far. We can create multiple parts. Each part can load uh, one program and that program might have different levels of layers. And in each layer, I can have different key groups which are mapped to a specific set of oscillators. And we'll see more of that as we go. Now let's go to the list view. And the list view is more precise or I would say uh, fine tuning of every parameters that uh, we see. So what you see now is part section, program section and layer section. And finally, on, uh, below here, we see the key group. So th this is the entire hierarchy, but uh, set differently. So right now I'm, I'm seeing everything that relates to, to this part. I see the, the MIDI in, I see the, uh, I can do MIDI uh, mute. I can transpose up or down in octaves and semitones and I can set the volume up and down. And by the way, if we'll just go back to parts here, we'll see that uh, the same values are reflected here. So it is, the, of course, the same part. Let's just go back to zero. And so this is the part level. At the program level, so this is the program that we loaded into this part, we can see that at the program level, we have a transpose octave here and we have a certain polyphony setting and, and so on. So where is that? So um, we can see that level here at the top. So let's go back here and we'll see that we have uh, these settings here. This is the program level. And uh, we can see the transposition of the octaves here, minus one and this is the program level. But if we go to layer one here or layer two or layer three, everything will be reflected also in the edit tab here in the middle, in the center pane. So this is also a way for us to control and to manipulate and change and build our sounds. Of course, what I can do is easily mute or solo any of the layers. So let's do that. Let's just solo the first one. And I can solo both of the two layers and all of them. Or I can just mute one of them. Okay, so very nice. So this is another way for us to control things. Now, when I'm just clicking of, on any of the layers here, I can go and change things in the edit pane here, or I can do it from here, it doesn't really matter. And I can see that I have certain key groups inside each of these layers and they can have different uh, mapping. And we'll talk more about key groups in a separate video, just focusing on key groups and how we can map different sections of our keyboards to different oscillators and so on. So uh, that's uh, the idea here. And what else? We can also see some, uh, some things that we can change. For example, if I'll just uh, um, focus myself here on, uh, on, this, uh, on this area here, we can uh, also change things 
at, uh, at that level as well. I don't have to do things from the list view, but it's very easy to navigate and to change things also in the list view. So that is it for this video. I hope that was uh, helpful for you. And now you can easily navigate uh, a certain program or even when you're creating your own program, you can do it. And uh, one last thing before we, we end this uh, session is that in the tree view, I can also do things like adding new levels or uh, new um, hierarchies. So for example, right now I'm watching, I'm looking at part one, I can right click here and I can add uh, effects at that level. And we'll see that in separate video. I can go to uh, the program level and add another layer. There you go. And I can go to any of the layers, right click and add a key group. So as you can see, as uh, I, I can right click on any of the levels and create a new level below that. And I can add effects, I can add modulations, I can add event processors and so on from the tree view. Very, very useful and very easy. So I'll see you in the next video. And what I suggest is before we do that, try and figure out for yourself a few things. Take uh, a program and try to analyze, try to uh, understand the different levels and how it is built.